Greetings again, gang. Don't even know if you can hear me with this thing on, but we'll give it a shot. <laughs> All right, let's do it this way. But I want to bring up the point is what's going on here. We talked about this on Tuesday night's live stream, and I had told you that I had ordered this. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about it. With everything going on in the world, we have no idea what's going to happen next, okay? And granted, something like this is a high-level prepper item, okay? Uh, it's not priority. I mean, there's a lot of other things that come ahead of time. But as you get to certain points in your preps, yeah, adding something like this is going to be important, and you have to decide when it becomes important to you, okay? With everything going on in the world right now, maybe it moves a little closer, whatever. Now, I'll give you a little bit here, but obviously what we're going to talk about is NBC, nuclear, biological, and chemical response for all of us, okay? Now, this particular mask is probably one of the best on the market, okay? About 250 bucks. Does not come with a hood. Does not come with the filter. Okay, I'm waiting for the filter to show up in the mail. All right, filter's another 70 bucks, so figure $320. But, okay, per person. I'm going to give you a couple of things here in talking about NBC training. If I ever do a video and you don't see this, okay, that means all shit's gone to hell, all right? give you a little history piece here in case anybody doesn't know. Anybody know why Adolf Hitler had his tiny little mustache? I'll give you this, okay? It's actually why. He was a corporal in the German army in World War I and was in the trenches. And he had his big old handlebar mustache and everything like that. And mustard gas was fired off at them. He put his mask on, and his mask didn't seal. And so frantically, with his knife, he was trying to cut his mustache so he could seal his mask. Yes, if you have facial hair, guys, mustache will be okay. Beard, no. All right, you're not going to get a seal. So, just a little trivia part for you on that one. So, NBC training, all right? in nuclear, biological, and chemical. And a lot of this goes back to my time in the military, but it's something that is possible that we all have to deal with. Now, we should know that the use of chemical weapons was outlawed by the world after World War I. Okay? We also know... <laughs> That, that doesn't stop anybody from using them, okay? Biological and chemical weapons primarily all right, have been outlawed. But, gee, I don't know. You know, how many times have we heard things about sarin gas or anthrax or VX gas or anything like that? Yeah, okay, maybe outlawed, but doesn't mean it doesn't still exist and doesn't mean that there's not some Looney Tune fruitcake out there who says, you know what, screw it, I'm using it anyway. What are they going to do to me, kill me? Okay. So you got to prep for this. <clears throat> now, I want to give you this. A, a lot of talk about nukes in the news lately, you know, with what's going on with Putin and all that. A lot of talk, all of us, EMPs and things, that's true too. But I want to give you this. A biological or a chemical bomb set off over a metropolitan area feasibly will kill 10 times as many people as a nuclear blast because it spreads further. You get the wind. Okay? So how are you going to protect yourself against this? Now think about different types of chemical weapons. All right, you got blister agents, nerve agents, choking agents, blood agents, everything. All right. And you know, all these different weapons are categorized on how they affect the human body. 
I mean, some of them can literally start causing symptoms in seconds, okay? And others could take days or weeks before you even realize you have it. Now, if you see an explosion, obviously you're going to get away from it, okay? Anybody know what this means if you see somebody doing this? Okay, and I know the camera's not quite showing it, but basically arms up and down. That's the international symbol for gas, okay? If anything, if there's gas out there and you see somebody doing that, even if you don't know it, even if you didn't see it, you see somebody doing that, that means there's a gas attack. Get ready for, you know, start getting your protocols in place, okay? So what do you do if there is a gas attack? And this is very straightforward and easy for everybody, okay? First, get the hell away from the area, you know, moving crosswind to where it's come, to where the blast was. I mean, if the blast is north of you and the wind is moving south, you're going east or west. And I'll give you this as just a way to remember this in your head. Think of all the cartoons we watched as a kid and the tree comes falling down. And the character goes running and running and running and running and running and the tree falls right down on him. Why? Because he went right in line with the tree. Step three feet to either side, tree falls in front of you, behind you, whatever. You want to go crosswind. Simple reason is, obviously, you're not going to run toward the blast. Okay, if you're running downwind, it's just, you're not going to outrun it. All right, so run crosswind. Get away. And as soon as you've got away to a decent size, Get the damn mask on your face, all right? The most crucial parts to your body are your eyes, your nose, your mouth for anything chemical, you know, your mucous membranes, okay? Find shelter. Get inside a building, okay? Whatever the nearest building is. And then get to the highest level of that building. Chemical agents, gases, and stuff like that are heavier than air. They will sink, okay? So the higher up you can get, the less exposure you're going to have. I mean, obviously, things are coming down. They're going to settle at ground level. You don't want to be at ground level. Okay. Once you get in this room, seal off any windows, seal off any doors, seal off any air vents. I talked about this the other day in, you know, what you want to do. Duct tape and plastic. Okay, sure, you're probably not going to have that convenient. Wet towels whatever would be, anything you can find to plug up any sort of holes. You should have, if you're at home, you should have a designated room where that is your, to use the term, safe room, okay? Whether it's your master bedroom, a spare bedroom, a bathroom, whatever would be, okay? And you should store the materials in that room to figure that you are going to be in that room for an extended period of time, all right? So, you know, if you've got a, a prep room upstairs or whatever, seal off the windows, seal off the vents, you know, more than just closed the vents, cover them up with plastic and duct tape or whatever it would be. That's going to be important, okay? Now, once you've got that done, the next thing to do is decontaminate yourself. I will say this, if you have the ability to quickly get undressed before you go into your safe room, do so. And I said this on Tuesday night as well. Guys, modesty at this point is who cares, all right? We've all seen naked bodies, all right? You know, oh my God, my neighbor's going to see me naked. <laughs> well, the, your neighbor's going to see you dead too if you're in a house. So, you know, who cares, all right? Get undressed as fast as you can. If you have the ability to do it outside that safe room, do it because that leaves the contaminated clothes outside the safe room. If it's winter time, you have more clothes on, it's going to take longer than 10 seconds or so to get undressed, do it inside the room. Close everything off, get it done. Take off all your clothes. You're going to put them in a sealed container, a plastic bag, something to prevent the contamination that's on those clothes from spreading. Now, the one big key when you're getting undressed, you see I'm wearing a t-shirt, do not, under any circumstances, lift that shirt over your head, okay? Again, mucous membranes, nose, mouth, uh, and eyes. 
you do not want to risk getting any contaminant that's on your body into your body. Rip your shirt off, cut your shirt off, whatever it's going to be, okay? You do not want anything going over your head. Hopefully, you've got your mask on anyway, so it's going to make it even more difficult to get the shirt off over your head in the first place. Cut the damn thing off. It's going in the trash anyway. You know, I don't care if you've got Armani shirts on, okay? Nobody cares <laughs> at this point how well-dressed you are. You're going to be naked in a second anyway. So once you get yourself totally undressed and everything, the next thing to do is to uh, shower, okay? And you want to shower with cold water. You do not want to open your pores. You want to use pores. You want to use plenty, plenty of soap, all right? Every inch of your body. You're going to have to have somebody help you, okay? Again, so they're going to see you naked. Who cares? You know, I don't know about you, but there's places on my body I can't reach, okay? You know, middle of my back, whatever it would be. That's got to be washed. You're going to be washing each other. Do that. In between your toes, the bottoms of your feet, you know, whatever. Soak yourself down with soapy water. I know, and cold. It's going to be tough. Dead's tougher. If you do not have access to water, okay, let's say you're at work or something like that, and you're in an office building to do it, okay, talcum powder or flour. Not that you really have talcum powder or flour at the office, but somehow, some way, though. That those are the other things that are going to work. These are things you need to plan to have uh, in wherever you plan on going. Keep a jar, keep a, a can of baby powder in your desk drawer in the office. Who cares why? Okay, it doesn't take up that much space. Just in case. All right. Put that on again every inch of your body it will soak up any of the contaminant that's on you liquid form obviously then after about 30 45 seconds you can brush it all off hopefully you've got in that room a secure clean change clothes that you kept in a sealed container so it wouldn't be contaminated once you got everything out done it's not perfect guys nothing in life is but this is the best thing you can do. Once you get all this done, do not open that door for anybody. And I know what people are going to say, but my kids are out and you know just got home or my spouse just got home. Have them do the same thing in a different room. Okay? Because if you open that door, you just defeated the purpose of everything you just did. Okay? You're now closer contaminated again. The air is now contaminated again. The uh, person coming in is going to contaminate everything. You're going to have to reshower, do all this sort of stuff, and again, wait for any sort of contaminant that they just brought in the room to settle. Okay, so you got more problems then. I can't give you an idea on how long to stay in that safe place. Because every chemical is different. Uh, at this point, basically, you're waiting for an all clear, okay? for From some sort of government official or whatever would be on the radio. Hopefully, you've got a battery-operated radio in that safe room uh, to get your all clear. Where I live... <laughs> Chances are the government's not coming out and going, okay, in Sharp Chapel, Tennessee, it's now all clear. I'm going to have to use my best judgment. And, you know, obviously that will mean a couple of days. But, you know, I'm not trying to scare you here, guys, but we don't know what's happening. And we're preppers. We get ahead of the game. You know, we aren't reactionary. I'll put a link to the mask if anybody wants it, there's, and again, I'm going to say this, just like anybody else, there are different solutions for different people. I mean, I've got the dual eyes here, glass. There's also, you can get one that's got a single face shield. I'll give you this. The whole face shield gives you a better field of vision. The ones with the single eyes are better for a shooter. 
Are you going to be a shooter or are you going to be a support person, if you will? Okay. Support person, maybe the face shield, the wide open, like a motorcycle face shield is better for somebody who's going to be using a rifle. This one's better. I will put a link to a hood and whole hazmat suit on there if you want to get that. Uh, again, that will stop the chemical or biological from getting on you. It will stop some sorts of radiation. It's the same one the U.S. military uses at this point. Uh, I was able to find the gloves, same ones that I had when I went in. They've never improved on those, so it's the same gloves. I'll put a link to that. The one thing I have had a hell of a time finding, guys, I can't find this. and I will continue to look, but if anybody knows where you can get them in various sizes, I found like size 9, you know, place to have it, are the booties, the ones that you put over your shoes. You're going to want to have that if you plan on venturing outside your house for any sort of time afterwards, okay? You know, that could be days, weeks, whatever it would be. We don't know. Like I said, this is a high, high-level prep. The equipment, the mop, the mop gear, okay? The rest of the stuff, what to do, that should be knowledge up here. You know, you can get some flour for it. Like I told you in the morning video, you can get some talcum powder. You can easily put a bag uh, of a change of clothes in a safe room somewhere. None of that costs you anything. So I wanted to give you this because a few people have asked about it. It was a topic on Tuesday's live stream. I wanted to wait until this came in the mail so I could show you guys this because that was my latest prep. But, you know... Pray to, you know, it's another one of those preps that we, we all pray to God we never have to use any of them, okay? This is one I certainly hope I never have to use. But again, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Pinball out.